Hi, Deidre. I'm so excited for our video today. Hi, Sherry. I am too. And it's going to be so much fun sharing videos of Christmas ornaments made from junk and stuff that we have around our house already. I had been thinking about it for a really long time and I thought, okay, this is going to be really hard, but I actually came up with a lot of good ideas and I know that you did too. I have lots of stuff laying around the house that I was able to turn into Christmas ornaments and um, I'm excited to share them with everybody today, but I'm also really excited to share them with uh, the collaboration with you today because I think we have kind of similar styles and uh, I think all of our followers are really gonna enjoy what we've come up with today. Yes, if any of my viewers have not watched our Upcycle Life yet, you guys are totally missing out because Deidre is amazing. She is such a great teacher and upcycler. And I am really just thrilled to be working with you today. And I think most of my followers are probably already following your content. When I first started on YouTube, you were one of the first girls that I started watching that really were doing some upcycling and um, so inspirational. So what we'll do is we've each made our own videos with some projects and uh, we'll put the link down below in the description for uh i'll put the link down for sherry's video so after you've watched mine you can head over and watch hers definitely when you're done with this video be sure to watch the whole thing first but then go to the description box and click the link because then you will get even more ideas for creating ornaments just using junk that you have around the house okay sherry let's, let's get, get started. started i am loving the vintage looking brass bells like those sold by kirkland's in pottery barn so i thought it would be fun to make some miniature ones to hang on the tree i started with some prescription pill bottles and i used an exacto knife to cut off the top and the bottom of each of my bottles then i cut out the egg cups from a foam egg carton a cardboard carton would probably work just as well I pressed the pill bottle into the foam egg cup to make an impression so that I could cut it out to precisely fit the top of the bottle. I massaged the little piece of foam, pressing it to make it as thin as I possibly could. Then I very carefully flipped it inside out. I applied hot glue to the rim of the top of the pill bottle and then adhered the little piece of foam. Then, to recreate the appearance of the soldering line, I applied hot glue around the rim of the piece of foam. Then I cut a small straight strip of foam from the egg carton and used hot glue to apply it to the bottom rim of the pill bottle. Next, I mixed some black latex paint with some baking soda at about a 50-50 ratio. I brushed this mixture over my pill bottles, and when the paint was dry, I applied a second coat of this paint baking soda mixture. I had forgotten to add rings to the top of the little bells, so once the black paint was completely dry, I cut small strips of foam from the egg carton, formed them into rings, and hot glued them to the top of each pill bottle. Then I painted them with that same baking soda mixture. Once that paint was dry, I painted over all of the black paint with a gold metallic paint. And when the metallic paint was dry, I brushed on some antiquing wax, wiping off the excess. At this point, I was pretty happy with the color of the bells, but as a finishing touch, I dry brushed on just a little bit of black paint. I took some jute rope that I had in my stash and tied some to the top of each of the bells. At this point, I realized that I had not attached a clapper to my bells. So I just cut up an old dowel rod, cutting it into pieces so that each piece was just slightly longer than the bell. I just used hot glue on the end of the dowel rod to attach it inside the bell and then I painted the clapper black.
There are so many things you can do with old jar lids. Here's one of my favorite ideas. Find three lids that are approximately the same size. Spray paint them white. I like to use Zinsser Primer. And then glue them together in a row using super glue or Gorilla Glue. Add hot glue to the joints on the back side to further adhere the lids together. To create a hanger, cut a long loop of twine. I pressed the ends of the twine into the hot glue to further reinforce the joints. Create a scarf by cutting a small strip of scrap fabric or ribbon and tying it between the two top lids. I also glued two small buttons to the middle lid. I dipped the end of a skewer stick into some orange paint and let it dry. And then I cut off the tip and used super glue to adhere it to the top lid. I used a black paint pen to dot on some eyes and a mouth. In place of a hat, I made a small wreath using a greenery stem and hot glued that to the top lid. I also added some small red pip berries to the wreath. I hot glued a small stick to the back of the center lid so that each end stuck out like an arm. I hot glued a small bottle brush tree to one side of the stick. To clean up the appearance of the back of the lids, I traced around the lids and cut out three circles from a cereal box and then hot glued those circles to the back of each lid. Here's an idea for a large lid. Paint the lid in your desired color. Then stretch a small piece of scrap fabric, sweater, or doily across the top of your lid, tucking the edges to the back side. Working in small sections, use hot glue to hold your fabric to the underside of your lid. To create a hanger, glue a loop of twine or ribbon to the back side of the lid. Hot glue a pipe cleaner or some other kind of trim around the edge of the lid. To clean up the back side, trace around the lid onto some scrapbook paper or an old Christmas card. Cut it out and hot glue it to the back of the lid. Embellish your ornament however you like. I glued on a few pieces of greenery stems and some pearl beads. Woodland Christmas decor is so popular right now, so I wanted to try to make some mushrooms using my foam egg carton. I cut out several of the individual egg cups and then evened up the edges. As I had done with the brass bell project, I massaged each of the pieces of foam, pressing it as thin as possible, and then very carefully turning it inside out. To be honest, the foam did tear a couple times. Luckily, I had 12 egg cups to work with. For the bases of the mushrooms, I cut up a few sticks from my yard. Then I hot glued the end of each stick to the underside of the foam. I painted the foam with various colors of chalk paint, painting the underside and the top side. I attached a clip to the stick so that the mushroom would stay upright while the paint dried. When the paint was dry, I used the end of a small paintbrush to dot on some small polka dots. They were already looking pretty cute, but I decided to take it up a notch. I wrapped a small piece of ruffly lace that I had around the top of the stick and hot glued it in place. I drilled a small hole in the top center of each mushroom, making sure the drill bit went into the center of the stick. Then I screwed in an eye hook and tied a loop of string through the eye hook.
Last week, I made a small birdcage ornament using wire and a metal lid. So this week, I wanted to try to make a birdcage using sticks. I cut up several small sticks from my yard into about five inch lengths. Once I had a small pile of relatively straight sticks, I cut the bottom off of two paper cups. I cut away all of the cup, leaving just the bottom and the ridged area around it. Then I applied a strip of two-sided adhesive foam tape inside the ridge. I found mine at Dollar Tree. With the sticks standing upright, I began pushing them into the foam tape. Once I had sticks all the way around the base of the cup, I took a second piece of foam adhesive tape and adhered it along the top edge of the sticks. Once the sticks were arranged and spaced exactly the way I wanted them, I began applying hot glue both around the bottom of the sticks and around the top of the sticks next to the foam adhesive tape. I cut off the top pieces of stick above the piece of foam tape so they would all be exactly at the same level. Then I carefully pressed the top of the sticks into the bottom of the second paper cup, pressing the foam adhesive against the inner edge. If you like, you could paint your paper cup bottoms, but I decided to glue on some jute ribbon instead. Inside the birdcage, I added some small pieces of faux greenery, some Spanish moss, a small plastic bird from Dollar Tree, and of course, a little fake snow. I decided I didn't like the white cup bottoms, so I cut some circles out of some scrapbook paper that I had and used a little glue stick to attach them to the top and bottom of the birdcage. To hang the birdcage, I drilled a small hole in the top center and then pressed a loop of twine through the hole, knotting it on the underside. I had intentionally left a little gap between two sticks in the front of the birdcage, so I went back and added a little cross stick to create the illusion of a door. As a finishing touch, I applied some spray adhesive to the sticks and sprinkled on a little fake snow. I made a second birdcage following the same steps, only this time I used little dowel rods instead of sticks and I spray painted it black. Leather decor is so popular right now. So when I came across this leather bound planner from 2015, I decided to use the cover to create a leather ornament. I created a tree shaped pattern that I could trace around on my piece of leather. I just used a pair of scissors to cut out my two tree shapes from the back of my leather planner. I applied Gorilla Glue on the back side of one of the tree shapes and then adhered the two pieces of leather together. I sandwiched a loop of string between the pieces of leather at the top of the tree to create a hanger and then glued on a small bow. I used some Dollar Tree rub-on transfers to apply the word joy to the front of the tree. Then I used a fine tip sharpie to draw on some little stitch marks all around the edges of the leather. Most of you already know that I love vintage shiny bright ornament boxes. So I printed out some vintage box images in a tiny size to fit the top and sides of a matchbox, which is approximately one and a half inches by two inches by half an inch. 
I printed the images out on regular copy paper and then adhered them to the matchbox using Mod Podge. You could just apply the images to the top and bottom of the matchbox, but I went ahead and covered up the long striker sides of the box to make them look even more authentic. To create a hanger, I threaded a large needle with a piece of string and then ran it through one of the small sides of the matchbox and knotted it to keep it from pulling back through the hole. For this next project, you could use a jar lid again, but I used something else that I have plenty of, tree slices. To give my tree slices a little more color, I applied some watered down antiquing wax, wiping off the excess. Then I printed out two pieces of vintage sheet music going vertically on one piece of copy paper. Both songs were about Christmas trees, so then I began cutting out words and phrases from the song lyrics on one of the pieces of sheet music, and I began arranging those little strips of paper into the shape of a Christmas tree. Once I was happy with the shape and arrangement of the pieces of paper, I applied Mod Podge to my wood round and began carefully arranging the paper and pressing it into the Mod Podge. Once all the strips of paper were applied to the Mod Podge, I went over the top of the wood slice with another coat of Mod Podge. For the second wood round, I decided to tear the paper instead of cutting it. The easiest way to tear your paper perfectly is to apply water around the words or phrases using a very small paintbrush. Then the paper will tear along those water lines. Once again, I applied Mod Podge to the top of my wood round and then began arranging my strips of paper to create the shape of a tree. I drilled a small hole in the top center of each wood round and then pressed in the two ends of a loop of twine into the hole. I added a little super glue to make sure that the twine stayed put. I decided to add just a little bit of greenery and a couple little pit berries at the top for color. Because I had cut up way more sticks than I needed for the birdcage, I decided to glue a few together to create a snowflake. I just used hot glue in the center of three sticks. For extra reinforcement, I added some additional hot glue in the center and then wrapped some jute twine around it several times. To create a design at the end of each stick, I cut some additional small pieces of stick. I made a cross shape at the ends of three of the pieces of stick and a V shape at the end of the other three. Then I hot glued some small pieces of greenery, a small bow, and some little pit berries to the center of the snowflake which effectively covers up the twine. I applied some spray adhesive over the snowflake and then sprinkled on some iridescent glitter. And then to create a hanger, I ran a loop of twine through the twine on the back of the snowflake. Here's a fun way to commemorate the birth of a baby. You can use an old letter block or any type of square block. Using my orbital sander, I sanded all but the letter side smooth. Then I printed out the baby's information on colorful paper in sizes to fit each side of the block. 
You can print out my colorful paper designs or just print the information on some pretty scrapbook paper. Because the freshly sanded block will soak up some of the Mod Podge, I made sure to apply Mod Podge both to the block and to the back of my piece of paper before adhering the two together. I trimmed off any extra paper along the edges and then set it aside and let the Mod Podge dry. Once it was dry, I used a piece of 220 grit sandpaper to distress all of the edges and then I applied a top coat of Mod Podge to seal and protect the block. I drilled a hole in the top center of the block and then inserted a small eye hook. I added a loop of coordinating ribbon for hanging. Thank you so very much for watching today, and don't forget to check out Deidre at Our Upcycled Life for even more Christmas ornament DIYs using junk from around the house.